Hello and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the Joni Loves Chachi to the Dice Tower's Happy Days. My name is Cody. Say, kids, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at a game called America! From Historical Board Gaming. America, with a K from Historical Board Gaming, is an alternate history scenario in which one to three players take on the roles of the Germans, the Japanese, and the Americans as the two Axis powers attempt to subjugate North America. The Americans, of course, attempt to hold out until they can perfect their atomic research and win the game. The game board is a map of the United States. It has, of course, various geographic territories. It has many victory cities uh, upon the board, as well as certain nuclear research sites in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in uh, Los Alamos, New Mexico, and then, of course, up there in Kooky, Washington. Now, the game contains rules for kind of army building. Essentially, you can build the army that you want to field to a point you have to adhere to certain rules. There has to be kind of weighted toward infantry uh, in certain ways. But, of course, you have all the different kinds of weapons here. You have, of course, infantry, you have mech infantry, you have regular medium tanks, you have super heavy tanks, you have these advanced bombers, you have jet fighters. So it's a little bit science fiction-y here, given the time period. But at the beginning of the first turn, the Axis go first, but after that, uh, it's going to be determined by an initiative die roll. The die roll plus however many victory cities you conquered or you retook during the preceding turn. Now, at the beginning of your turn, you're going to place whatever reinforcements you bought from the preceding turn. Now, the Axis can place this kind of in their in their invasion areas or invasion queues that are going toward the east and west coast. And the American player can place his uh, builds in any American cities. Immediately after you place, then you buy new units. You purchase new units. Um, the Axis, I think, always have like 30 build points. And the Americans, it's kind of depending upon the number of cities that they have. Next, you can begin to move units around the board. You can move units from one area to another, or from cities to, to non-cities, or vice versa. You can kind of move strategically your units into place for attacks. Then what you're going to do is on the Axis phase, the Americans get a chance to have guerrilla attacks. Essentially, they can pick three different zones, and they can roll, and if they get a hit, I think they're rolling a one or a two. If they can get that uh, on an eight-sided die, then they go ahead and destroy any unit within that uh, that area. That's kind of their, their sabotage, guerrilla unit sabotage. If that leaves the space empty, then they can actually form an infantry unit for you to use. Now, during at this point, though, during the uh, Axis or the Allied phase, after guerrilla attacks are conducted, you go ahead and roll your attacks. Now, you try to roll the lower, the better. But you go in order, and of course, it's a simultaneous combat, so if your units are killed, if you're the defender, they still get a chance to roll before they are taken off the board. Now you have a battle board where you're going to roll these battles on, and you go ahead, you roll back and forth, it tells you kind of what numbers uh, each thing rolls at or below, and it's also got kind of what order you fight in. you got your anti-aircraft guns are going to go, you've got any air battles are going to go, and then you've got, of course, the big ground battles that you're going to play out. Now during the battle, you are rolling a 12-sided die, and what you do is you get a couple of funky little things happen here. If you roll what is essentially a one, uh, you get a lucky shot. You get a target symbol on there, you get a lucky shot. And that means then as the attacker, you can kind of choose within reason what enemy unit is going to take the hit. So you can kind of target uh, things that maybe normally, you know, if, if, your, if your opponent was choosing, he wouldn't choose that. So that's nice. And each unit has kind of their own what they can hit with a lucky shot. You also have, if you roll a 12, uh, what is called failed orders. Now, if you roll failed orders, essentially your unit has to retreat if you're the attacker. It doesn't do anything to the defender, but the attacker has to retreat his unit from battle. So that's a very interesting mechanic there as well. 
Now, regular combat typically is only going to be about two rounds. If you're attacking a city to kind of simulate that attrition that's going on, you're only going to roll one round. There are, you know, again, some modifiers, some things that can happen, but typically you're going to roll one round in a city attack. And each city has its own kind of embedded anti-aircraft gun to protect it from air attack. Now, at the end of your turn, you're going to engage in a victory check to see if you've won. If you are an Axis player, uh, you win the game, you both win the game, if you have uh, conquered a total of 12 victory cities. Now, the Allies check their victory a little bit differently. They've got three nuclear, those three nuclear research stations. Now, each one of those add, is like five victory points. So, whenever they, if they can hold all three... They're automatically going to get 15 points at the end of the turn. But then they roll a die. They add that die number onto the number of victory point uh, nuclear research facilities they have. And then they keep track of that. They write it down on a separate piece of paper. As soon as they get to 100 victory points, which is going to be after several uh, rounds, then they win the game. So it's really a contest of can the Axis take those 12 cities before the, the allies essentially are just able to keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, and hold on to some of those victory cities and pass that 100 point. So that is basically it. That is the, the basic overview of America with a K. There's more going on here, of course, but that is essentially the basic gist of this game. So first of all, before uh, I talk about the game itself, uh, the, the gameplay itself, I just want to talk a little bit about kind of alternate history and, and what my thoughts on it are. Um, when I was in, I guess I was a senior in high school, I read Robert Harris's Fatherland, which is a brilliant novel about um, uh, the Germans essentially winning World War II in Europe and the Cold War then taking place between Nazi Germany and the United States of America. The President of the United States was Joe P. Kennedy, Jack Penn Kennedy's father, and there's kind of a summit meeting between him and Hitler, and an SS officer kind of stumbles onto the truth about the Holocaust and he tries to bring it to light. It's, 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 it's a very interesting alternate history novel. It was my first real experience with the, with the genre. Since then, I have read many, many, many alternate history novels, and, and my favorite alternate history scenario is this idea of an Axis victory in World War II. I'm absolutely fascinated by it. Um, it, it, it's pure fiction, pure speculation, I know, but it's just, it's very interesting. If you know me, if you know the show at all, I have a master's degree in uh, history. I studied in Berlin. Um, I, I wrote my master's degree on Hitler and Stalin as, as military uh, commanders. So I, I know a thing or two about the history of the era, and I just, and I really enjoy the idea of kind of speculating about what if. So I was really attracted to this game. I, I know years ago it was on Kickstarter. And I couldn't afford to back it, but I, but I, but I kind of wanted to at the time. Uh, I, I never did, uh, but I, I always wanted to play. It was always in the back of my mind. And then, if, and not long ago, the good people at the uh, Historical Board Gaming they reached out to me and they asked me if I'd like to review. It. And I said, Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. <clears throat> um. So, so uh, the theme I think is brilliant. I love the theme of this game. I love it. Having said that, <laughs> the, the the actual history, the logistics of it is, I mean. There, there is simply no way uh, Germany and Japan could have invaded the United States with any hope of success uh, in this time period, even assuming uh, victory in Europe and, and, in, and in Asia. It just logistically would have been impossible. I know, I think it was in uh, B.H. Little Hearts, uh, the German general's talk, I want to say it was General Blumtrim, but I can't remember, but one of them said, you know, we Germans, we could have pulled off D-Day. We could have done D-Day. We could have executed the D-Day operation, but there is no way we Germans could have planned it. And that was kind of a testament to American logistical ability, and I think that is, is very telling. Anyway, enough about that. Let me go ahead and talk now about uh, gameplay itself and what I think here. So um, right up front, I've got some not insignificant criticisms of this game. Now, first of all, it's going to be compared very heavily, no doubt, to Axis and Allies. It plays very much like an Axis and Allies kind of... It's not a clone, I don't want to say that, but but it's very evocative of Axis and Allies. It very feels the way you're rolling it. I mean, there's some differences in, in the combat, some differences in units, but essentially it feels like kind of a, a, a new scenario of Axis and Allies. And two, it also feels a lot like the other uh, Game Master series game, Fortress America. If you play Fortress America, it's that same thing where the United States is being invaded from three um, directions. Uh, very similar to that. And, and the game presents a lot of the same strategic... Uh, choices and strategic obstacles that Fortress America um, gave. In that very general sense, it feels rather derivative. That's not a game killer. That's not something that I would poo-poo right there, but that is 
something you got to be aware of going into it. If you played those other games, this will seem familiar. Now, also, too, I'm not a big fan of the way victory points are awarded to the um, the allies here with, with um, you know, holding on to the, the victory cities and then rolling the die and then adding it together. I just, I didn't, it, it didn't thrill me. It seemed to me there was a better way for that to happen. I, 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 there, 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 it seems to me there was a clever mechanic they could have come up with that there. It's all right. It serves its purpose, but I just would have liked something better. And that brings me to another point about, the victory conditions and victory points. And that is, I really, really do not like it when a game says, oh, and you can keep score on a pad of paper. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. This this board has plenty of money, uh, plenty of room, rather, in the oceans. Make a little chart, something you can just keep track of. It's it's so much easier, it's so much better, and I don't have to get the game, get ready, get everything set up, and, oh, i got to get a pen and paper. I mean, I, you know, it's just... Lame. I really don't like that. I really don't like that. The guerrilla tactics where you're just picking an area, rolling the die, and taking things out, again, it just doesn't feel fully formed to me. I think there could have been a better solution to, 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 to representing guerrilla or partisan attacks. I think that could have been done better. I don't. I, again, I don't know how I'm not designing the game. I just felt here, again, it didn't kind of feel fully, fully formed, fully fleshed out. Um... There is downtime when it's not your turn, when you're placing your units, then you're buying a new units. There's there's some downtime there. And that's not really necessarily a criticism of just America with a K. This is also a criticism of games like Axis and Allies, because a lot of times when you are buying and placing, it can take time. And that's just the nature of these games. Be aware of that going into it. If it's not your turn, there's downtime. Now, all of those things that I've talked about, they're all problems I've got with this game. Um, not... Again, not deal breakers, but they're problems I got with the game. The one, dare I say, almost unforgivable sin is this game has a rule book that's got everything laid out fairly well. It's not a bad rule book, not a great rule book, but not a bad one. But it really, really needed either on the map or on some additional player cards the sequence of play. What happens? Now, you'll get into it pretty quickly, but, you know, you're always, especially in those first few rounds, even if you played it before, you're kind of going, okay, what's next? What's next? Okay, we've got to do this now. Okay, we've got to do this now. It just needed kind of a sequence of play card, and then maybe with some other little information on it. Some reference cards would have been really, really useful in this game, and I was really sad they weren't there. Really bummed about that. Now, all of those problems, they're not insignificant, as I say. But I gotta tell you, despite those, I really had fun with this game. I really, really enjoyed America with a K. It was a lot of fun. I liked it. A lot of it was because of the theme. I really like this theme. I think it's fun. I think it's inventive. I think it's clever. And I really, I, I mean, I always liked Axis and Allies in Fortress America. I mean, I loved Axis and Allies. And this game's very, very evocative of them. So I really, really loved that as well. Um, I just, you know. It's tense. I mean, you get some of these dice rolling, and I love games where you're, where you're rolling dice back and forth. And, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Um, first game I played, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, became my Stalingrad. I mean, that thing was changing hands left and right and left and right. And, and you know, I just held it by the skin of my teeth, ultimately. Uh, or I should say took it back, and then I won. If we'd have kept going on, I, I probably would have been overwhelmed there. Uh, I got it. It's, it's funny too because this game, if you're the American player, I think there are three cities that are absolutely key to your defense: uh, Chicago to kind of come down on Oak Ridge, Tennessee; Phoenix to protect Los Alamos; and then of course Salt Lake City, so you can blaze up to Washington and keep fighting the Japanese uh, kind of in the north northwest there. So <laughs> a lot of strategic fun here and, and possibilities. The the weapons are good. Combat, you know, combat to me is is just makes this game. And I like the lucky shot uh, aspect of it. I like the failed orders. That's something new and interesting. I like that it's a 12-sided die instead of a D6. Um, I, I think that's fun. I, I like that. If anything, I wish there'd been a little bit more die variation. Like maybe some of the some of the units rolled, you know, a, a D6. Maybe some of them rolled a D8 and then a D12. I mean, I, I like it when you can mix and match uh, dice. But, but don't get me wrong. I think the dice rolling in this is phenomenal. If you like to chuck dice, you're going to love uh, love this game as well. Anyway, so here's the thing. We bundle my love of this game and the fun I had with this game together with those problems. And what I'm kind of forced to conclude is the game is is good, but it feels unpolished. It feels like a first edition. 
And I would love to see a second edition of this game come out that addresses some of these problems. There's, there's, there's one bit, too, I didn't mention, where um, the first few rounds, you can't invade, uh, the Germans can't invade through the Gulf of Mexico, and the, and the Japanese can't invade the Mexican coast. It, there's supposedly like a, a big naval battle going on near the Panama Canal. And, you know, I would have liked to have seen maybe that come into it. I, I don't know. I don't know if a big naval battle is a thing, but 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 maybe a card thing or some better mechanic because you're like rolling die again to see whether or not you can open up those things to determine who won that battle. That'd be something else that'd be fun and interesting and thematic to kind of really bring to this game. Looking forward to the second edition on this one. As it is, I like it. I like it. I like it. Just don't love it yet, but it's got potential. So. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to say try it before you buy it. That is the Discriminating Gamer's recommendation. But be aware, it does have that kind of unpolished feel to it. But I think the, I think you may enjoy the game enough that you can get past that. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube by Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. After the American-Canadian Anschluss, will it be called Amerida? In addition to Robert Harris's Fatherland, here are some other books which posit a German victory in World War II. Schwastika Night by Catherine Burdekin. The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. In the Presence of Mine Enemies by Harry Turtledove. Farthing by Joe Walton. The Plot Against America by Philip Roth. SSGB by Len Dayton. These books and others are available in your local library.